Hey guys, this is the Ride of Photo, and if you are watching this, this um, I'm waiting for some people to get on. Um, this is the Vivitar 70-210mm f2.8 to f4, f4 on the long end, and I'm just going to be showing you around this lens. I bought it on uh, a website called K, and it cost only $75.00. It was a pretty inexpensive shipping, probably around uh, five bucks. And a really cool thing about this is it has a macro. If you go all the way to the 210 and focus back to there. And so at that point, it is um, at one uh, at 2.5x macro. It's not full macro, but it is very close. You can get pretty close on subjects. Um, you can do butterfly photography pretty easily with this because you can be farther away. Uh, this right here, you can see this little graph. This is the depth of field uh, chart. And you can see there's different colors for each of the lines. This white line is just showing you what's the point that has the the uh, line, the depth, uh, the depth of field line of focus then you see these lines on the on the sides of it this you can kinda of see that one that was blue this one's red and those correspond to the uh, colors of the the aperture that you're on so if you're on f8 that will be blue and that's showing you how wide that certain depth of that depth of field will be and so if you're at 70, it'll be probably, it'll be from 8 to 10 feet. That's how big the depth of field will be. So that's really helpful. The green, that's f22. Let me just show you those ap the aperture. This is full on f2.8. f4, 5.6. F8, F11, F16, and F22. And these two, the red is when it's at 70 millimeters, and the green is the aperture when it is at 210. So that's the difference. You see here, 70 is at F2.8, and 210 is at f4, the maximum aperture. And so, if you're at f22, the depth of field at 100 can be from uh, 10 feet to 15 feet. Another really cool thing about, well, of course, this is an awesome, cool uh, little thing because you can. Even this is a manual lens, so you will have to. It, it will, you cannot control this lens with the camera. You can't get any information, uh, like from the metadata, like the uh, f-stop and the focal distance. So, what you have to do is, is you have to manually change the aperture. So when this is on your camera, you have to change the aperture manually on the lens, and I love that feature. I prefer that over controlling it through the camera because it makes you think a little bit longer about how you're going to be shooting. So another cool thing is the glass. The glass is just beautiful. I love that uh, reflection off the, gra the glass and that's mostly because of a special coating they call VMC. So that is just a brief look over uh, the lens. Let me go over this so you you uh, zoom in by pushing and pulling, and then you focus but um using this, just turning it like that. It's very smooth. It's not going to be super hard to turn the focus. So let me go over the history of this lens. It uh, is a Vivitar lens, and that is not what you usually think of the the normal uh, lens brands. Vivitar 
used to be, well, their Series 1 lenses used to be, back in the days, maybe in the 70s, uh, they used to be like the the wanted lens, the the lens you dream about getting. They're, they're, they used to be really expensive, and the glass was um, used to be, for them at least, really pristine, and it was just one that you'd want to, you would dream of getting someday. So, and they, and for this one, this is the 70 to 210, of course, and this one had several different versions. There were uh, three, let me think, there were three different, three uh, first ones were the best. The third was, um, is known very well because it is one of the best um, lenses. It is the best lens in the whole group, the whole range. They have probably more than five different uh, versions. This is the fourth. This came right after the third. And it is still a spectacular lens. I've been shooting hummingbirds in action. I've been shooting... Uh, let me think. I've been shooting horses just recently with this lens. And I love if you put it at 210 uh, millimeter and then put it at the maximum aperture, uh, you will get a, a type of look that is just brilliant. It makes everything glow. It's kind of a glow look. If you put, if you go into Lightroom, if you have Lightroom, you can go in there and to pretty much effectively do what this is with this is doing is go to the clarity slider and probably put put it to negative 15 that'll kind of show you what it looks like when it's when it's sh doing that uh effect so i think i've covered pretty much everything on this lens i love it it is full metal so it is a pretty good build quality, but I actually prefer plastics, if you can uh, imagine that. <laughs> I love plastics because they, because with metals, usually if you get, if you hit them real hard, it's, it's going to make a dent, and that dent is not going to go away. It's going to stay dented, uh, it's really hard to fix, and often... Metal can cause a um, like a shock throughout the whole um, lens and even into the glass, so it can eat more easily break. That's why I like plastic lenses a little bit more, even though they're not exactly the best build quality, because when you hit it, it doesn't cause shock throughout the whole. It doesn't absorb shock. Um, as I mean, it absorbs shock better than metal does because uh, metal will just make it go th keep on throughout the lens. The plastics are more, I guess, malleable. They they're easier to um, bend. So when you hit it, it doesn't dent. It just um, gives it a ding or a little scrape, and that's pretty much it. And it's more cushioning for the le for the actual glass. So that's a little reason why I like plastic lenses better. Uh, that, yeah, that is it. I have no idea what this thing is. Just to elaborate on that, I have no idea. This is the aperture ring, and I have no idea what this. Some lenses have this. I think it has to do with video, because maybe it's used for easily switching the aperture. Maybe there's like a little, uh, Thing that you can attach to your lens to, to switch apertures easier with that little tab. I think it makes it look more vintage because you're like, what is that? This has got to be some old lens that, I mean, yeah. <laughs> so I love this lens. Uh, you can get it on um, K Camera, uh, KEH, I think it's KEH.com. Um, and search up Vivitar Series One, seventy to two ten millimeter f two point eight to f four macro, and you should be able to find it. I think it's only available for, available for Nikon F and Canon FD mounts. There's there probably there there probably are more. But that's the only only ones I've actually looked into seeing. 
and uh, I I really I really if you have another camera I still recommend you getting uh, this lens and get an adapter because this lens is seriously crazy awesome sharp uh, really fast for the price of under one hundred dollars and uh, if you want to see more of my videos, I know this is a live video, this is my first serious live video, go to youtube.com slash the right of photo and you should be able to find it. Um, right is spelled W-R-I-G-H-T. And I'll see you in my other videos. Make sure you check out my unboxing of this lens. Uh, it's up close to the top of my videos list. Thanks for watching, peeps. See ya.